now the progress that we have made has to continue. This isn't the end, this is just the beginning. Spokane County now moving on to phase two of the state's reopening plan. We saw several restaurants just like this one that you're seeing open up welcoming customers by noon today. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us today for Crempton News First at Five. I'm Whitney Ward broadcasting at home and Mark Hanrahan is, of course, there at the Crem2 studios. And Mark, boy, this was a big, much anticipated announcement. Certainly a welcome announcement, wasn't it, Whitney? Happy Friday to you. Spokane County, the largest county in the state to move on to phase two. Big news for business owners eager to open up after the several weeks of being shut down. Now, phase two means many businesses can reopen starting immediately. We have been able to slow the spread of COVID-19 in Spokane County so that we can, as health officer Dr. Lutz says, open the door slightly for some more businesses to resume. And now the progress that we have made has to continue. This isn't the end. This is just the beginning. And we need to even more uh, follow the measures that got us to this place in the first place. And that's social distancing, wearing masks, washing our hands regularly, uh, all those things that's got us here. The clock starts now to phase three, June 12th. How we conduct ourselves during phase two will determine how quickly we get there. This decision to enter into phase two will not only help us to retain businesses here in Spokane County, but also to start the process of attracting new businesses back to this region. Mayor Woodward said compliance with phase two guidelines are voluntary in Spokane County. She said she understands there are some people in the county who are not ready to resume public life. Local health leaders are asking people to still comply with best practices at businesses as they reopen, including wearing masks and practicing social distancing. As some restaurants start to open up today, we want to hear from you. Are you planning on dining out this weekend? Let us know on the Creme 2 app. In the meantime, our Shana Waltower joins us now. And Shana, some restaurants had customers right after today's announcement. Yeah, that's exactly right, Mark. I am right here outside of and in Kindle Yards right now on Monroe and Broadway, and we're seeing the sign that we've been waiting to see for a long time. That's the open sign lit up around Spokane County. Now, on one side, I have O'Donnell's uh, Pub on one side, and then on the other side, there's Charlie's Restaurant. In both of these restaurants, people are inside dining and enjoying something that they haven't been able to enjoy for a while, and that's just being in the company of people and eating inside of these restaurants here. Now, Pool's Public House on the South Hill was also another restaurant that opened up today. They were only open for an they opened just an hour after phase two was announced today, and they already had multiple customers eating inside. Some of those just arrived three minutes after employees unlocked their doors. Now, Pool says they had no trouble getting ready to open as soon as they heard Spokane County was entering phase two. Now, they were initially expecting a bigger rush of customers, but they said they were still happy with the turnout. They said the restaurant had already see, received 20 calls of people who were making reservations. Now I'm sure many of us can't wait to get out and start eating and enjoying a lot of this food we've been missing out on for a while and I'm sure the business owners would not mind that as well as they're trying to catch up on months of business that they lost due to the coronavirus restrictions. Now if you want to check out a list of restaurants that are open in the area you can text restaurant to our text line at 509-448-2000 to check out that list and come on, get out, and check out some of this great food that the county's been waiting to offer for the longest now. Reporting in Kindle Yards, I'm Shana Waltower, and I'll send things back to you, Mark. Shana, thank you very much. The numbers bouncing around a bit. We early, Earlier we asked you whether you are planning to dine out this weekend. About 60% roughly saying no, another 40% saying yes. So thank you for weighing in. Meanwhile, barbers also opening up, including the Man Shop Barber Shop. They are planning on reopening tomorrow for their customers and also the employees. They miss, they miss the day-to-day -day routine. They also miss the money. You know, that's why we're all here is for the money. In addition to face masks, employees will also wear smocks while cutting hair, and customers will wear one-time-use capes that will be washed and sanitized after each haircut. All right, if you take a look at this map of Washington behind me, all the counties in yellow right now, now in phase two, as you can see, that's essentially all of eastern Washington. OK, so what does phase two mean? Here's how the state breaks it down. Phases one through four, phase two right here. A lot of businesses and industries can now reopen, at least in some capacity under phase two. So here's what you need to know.
Let's start with recreation. Under phase two, all outdoor recreation involving fewer than five people outside of your house is allowed. That does include camping and beaches. That being said, though, state parks do remain closed to camping. Up next, gatherings. Here's what the guidance says. You can gather with no more than five people outside of your household per week. Basically, the state asking people to keep the circle of people you interact with small to slow the spread of the virus. Bottom line, no big gatherings. Travel restrictions go from only essential travel under phase one to limited non-essential travel within proximity of your home. That's really vague, but it's clear the state wants people to remain at home whenever they can. Now to businesses. Take a look at the list of businesses and industries that can resume in some capacity under phase two. There are quite a few, so let's focus on a few big ones, starting with retail. Retail stores can open at 30% capacity and must follow social distancing guidelines inside their stores. Hair and nail salons can reopen at 50% capacity, but the state asks that you call or text when you arrive and then wait outside until being told to enter and bring your face covering too, they say. Restaurants can reopen at 50% capacity with no more than five people per table. Bar seating, salad bars, and buffets still not allowed under phase two. One of the industries not originally on the list for phase two, but now appears to be is gyms, at least some of them. Under new guidance, it looks like appointment only, one-on-one -on -one personal training, and small group fitness sessions will be allowed if those gyms follow strict protocols. So we have more coverage right now on Krem.com. There you can read more about what's allowed and what's not allowed under Phase 2. You can also find that information on the Krem 2 mobile app. All right, let's switch gears for a moment, talk about weather, because, Thomas, it is a big weekend. Lots of folks looking to get outside. How's the weather going to shape up? Yeah, the weather look starting to look a bit better for this weekend with sunny skies, but I'll tell you what, the overall trend is warmer weather. I'm actually looking at 80s come next week. Not this weekend, but later on next week. And, yeah, we are flipping the script from this wet and cool rainy period to a warm and dry one for next week. More specific details as what you can expect day by day for the holiday weekend are coming up in a few minutes. Looking forward to that, Thomas. Thank you very much. And as we head into Memorial Day weekend, family members struggling to honor the 10 veterans who have passed away from the coronavirus at the Spokane Veterans Home. Whitney? Hi, Mark. Yeah, normally there would be military services and full honors for these veterans who have passed from this outbreak. But because of this outbreak, it's all on hold right now. And that's been extremely hard for those families. Take one family, for example, the family of 75 year old Harold Adams. He's been known as Boomer for as long as anyone can remember. And losing him in the middle of this pandemic has made an already difficult situation that much harder. So actually, when it started over in Seattle and you heard about how bad it could get in a nursing home, we started to worry. Then it just seemed to snowball. They moved him directly to Sacred Heart. He seemed to be not terrible at the beginning, but as it progressed, he became catatonic. And they contributed that, I believe, to the brain swelling. And so... Uh, it was just a roller coaster. And you thought, you know, if we could just talk to him and hold his hand and say, Boomer, it's okay, but we couldn't. How hard was that for your husband? Uh, really hard. Boomer lived with us for four or five years. And, you know, we were his constant. Uh, when Gary called and the nurse put the phone to Boomer's ear and said, Boomer, it's Gary, and his eyes fluttered. You know, you knew he knew, but. That was all we could do. <laughs> that was all we could do. And here we are now on Memorial Day weekend. He was a veteran, served in the Army. Yes. Uh, what would you like for him right now? Well, above all, I don't want him to just be a number in this terrible tragedy. Our hope was just to get recognition for these 10 people who have passed because they do deserve recognition because of what they fought for for all of us and just the fact that i don't think many of them would have passed at this time because for your family um it was very real for for so many others out there it's very abstract it sounds like it's only sick people it's only old right. people does that frustrate you when you hear stuff like that? So many people, oh, the virus isn't real. You know, I don't know anybody who has it. Well, I do. I do. And, and I want you to realize that it is real. It's out there. And for folks in Boomer's age group, 
in a nursing home, it's a terrible, terrible thing. You don't want this. You know, you don't want this in your family. I promise you. A very hard day and a very hard weekend for that family. I did reach out to the Washington Department of Veterans Affairs. They're the ones who run the Spokane Veterans Home just to kind of get their take on all of this. And they too very much want to honor these veterans. I'm told they will be having a specific service to honor them and those who have died from this outbreak. They just can't have it right now. Memorial Day weekend seems like a great time to do it. They just want to protect all of the residents who are still there and make sure that even the staff and everyone else who would be involved in a service like that, that they just don't get exposed to this virus and potentially spread it to anyone else. So there are plans to have that kind of a service. It just can't probably happen until maybe this summer. Uh, and they just don't know. It could be even after that, but they definitely want to make sure and honor those. I am told also there will be some kind of a virtual memorial service this weekend by means of some videos that will be posted online for those families just to honor those who have died at the Spokane Veterans Home and of course to honor all who have served. It's definitely a hard weekend though for those families across the board. All right, in other news, we're going to talk about, continue talking about phase two. Local leaders now starting to look ahead. They're gonna explain what could happen if we don't continue to social distance. So don't go anywhere. Creme 2 News will be right back.